Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I really want to provide a sincere thank you to the uh, IOM for having me here today. It's, it's a real honor and privilege to be here to speak with you. And um, I'm from the great state of Michigan, so I'm going to use uh, two minutes of my time to just talk about what Michigan's like. Tourism's our second biggest industry, but anyway. Michigan uh, has two peninsulas. And one of the unique things about Michigan is we have very, very rural areas in the Upper Peninsula, and we have very, very large urban areas like Grand Rapids and um, the Detroit metro area. We also have an intense four seasons. I know winter has been tough for everyone, but I will say this, our weather in Michigan has a direct impact on the shopping and the caseload in Michigan, and we've got charts to prove that. We also serve over a quarter million WIC participants every month. We've got uh, 240 clinics in all 83 counties, and we provide $514,000 every day via EBT in outstanding supplemental food for our clients at over 2,000 vendors. So that kind of gives you, you know, where Stan is as far as the state that, that is being represented. We also went statewide for EBT in 2009. Prior to that, we were the first state to pilot the online technology, and we were the first state to actually do self-checkouts for uh, WIC EBT. Uh, we really embrace technology. We recently set up a client portal uh, for clients to get information about clinics and WIC and uh, schedule appointments and also find the remaining balance and we provide nutrition ed via the internet and that's tied into their client record. And uh, I also want to share with you, I, I'm very proud to say we were selected as a pilot for the summer feeding uh, program for children using EBT and using the WIC model. So um, I feel very fortunate. I've got a great state. I've got great colleagues from USDA that provide us some outstanding support. Okay, now I want to talk about some of the, the barriers. Um, and if you would all, just for a second, try to put the hat on or shoes on of a WIC client. Some of the first frontline barriers is that client has to find that correct food, the right size, and brand for that particular store. In some states, they might have the least expensive brand, and then they have to take it to the checkout clerk. Um, let me give you an example of 16-ounce loaves of bread. I don't know how all of you purchase bread, but I'll be really honest. I don't really look at 16 ounces. I look at what's on sale. And I looked at its whole grain. And it might be 20 ounce, might be 22 ounce. And when we first went to retailers and told them WIC was going to a 16 ounce, you know what the retailer said? Oh, those are those cheater loaves. We charge everybody for less ounces because it's less ounces at the same price. Just, just be aware of that. Um, also ask yourself, how do you shop and select items? Also, you know, think of the WIC client. You know, what, what do WIC clients select and buy, or why not? We've got data and information on EBT by UPC at a very granular level. Also, there's some products for WIC that really don't make sense. Common sense and dollars and cents. Uh, an example is a dangling quart, and uh, if you need an ex explanation about that, I will give that during break. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but there's also some concerns on WIC products and some challenges by health professionals and providers. I am not an MD, I'm not a medical uh, person by practice, but juice was previously eliminated for infants, which was great. But I will tell you some pediatricians quite honestly beat on me and say, and when's WIC going to get rid of that juice for children? Because according to them, once those children have that sweet taste, they want that sweet taste even more. Some other barriers as a state, and ITO stands for Indian Tribal Organization. The agencies have a lot of different challenges and are complex in various, various ways. Just because of the size, if you look at uh, the size of um, California, New York, and Texas, and then you look at the size of some very rural uh, intertribal organizations, Guam, Puerto Rico, American Samoa, they're all in WIC. Um, also, the brands that are authorized, we've got to balance the brands with the USDA uh, approval and the products that are available and the price and the client uh, preferences. Those are things we have to look at. We have to look at what type of, of um, impact it might have on the data system and the cost to make those data system changes because we don't get extra money um, you know, when there's a food package change or if we're changing products. We have to use our existing at our existing budget since WIC is not an entitlement program. And then also on EBT, I am very blessed that we rolled out EBT when we did. I had a great staff and, and, and great collaboration with USDA, but there's only 13 or maybe there's 14 states now that are EBT and everyone else has to be there by 2020. 
The other thing is, um, you know, when we talk about different foods, uh, USDA, uh, regional office, we have to send to them to get review and approval and printing of this little gem, which I'll pass around to the, to the IOM. This is our WIC food card. We've gone to a photo food card. We print this in English, Spanish, and Arabic. Michigan has the second largest Arab Chaldean population outside of the Mideast. Some other barriers, um, we've got to look at product confusion, product packaging, the distribution, the serving size, and potential changes. We have to review what is readily available on the shelves of, of authorized vendors. So kind of do that when you're thinking of you know, different changes. We actually do a food preference survey with clients. We talk to our local agencies. Then I send my staff out and they actually look, if we're considering this product, is it even available? And is it easy to find and not confuse with a product that might not be WIC eligible? Then we work with manufacturers who want their products. And then we also have uh, political impact as far as choices if we're taking a particular product off. And again, I'll talk to you at break if you have a question about that. Anyway, these are some thoughts to consider. If you look at making the WIC shopping experience positive and easy, I think we're all on the same page. Our goal is that we want that prescription, those benefits to be easily purchased and we want that WIC client to consume them. National WIC Association has put together a journey map that's just outstanding that shows the journey of the client when they first hear about WIC and come in the clinic, get their benefits, go to the store and so forth, and there's certain pain points in there, and some of those pain points are the shopping experience and finding those right food items. We also need some reasonable flexibility and allowance for food package sizes and any changes. Um, the food industry continues to evolve and continues to change. And you know, one of the things that uh, you know, I, I do want to share with you is we have no control over that. You know, the 59 ounce uh, glass, or not glass, plastic containers of, of orange juice that's out there. You know, going from the 64 to the 59 ounce, we are not allowed to provide that because it doesn't provide the maximum nutritional value. We need some of that flexibility. If that client really wants orange juice, you know, uh, that, that makes it a challenge and, and then to find those products in the state. We also need some reasonable flexibility and allowances, not only on the package size, but when there's changes in the industry. I'll just share with you peanut butter. Some of the national brands of peanut butter a couple years back um, changed their size from 18 ounce to 16 ounce and then you know, now pretty much all national brands no longer are in the 18 ounce, they're in 16 ounce. So, you know, you have to look at, okay, so what's available out there? And then for WIC, as I mentioned earlier, you know, there's 50 states and there's 30 ITOs and territories. So, you know, consider allowing for more ranges and parameters of some of the food products and quantities as one size really doesn't best fit for all states and agencies. Consider more option sizes and choices and food groups with some flexibility. You know, restricting the product size, limiting variety and format um, of approved sizes definitely, definitely, definitely has a negative impact on our WIC enrollment, redemption, consumption, and the retention of our clients on WIC. We've got a lot of state agencies, including ours, that our caseload is, is being challenged right now. That shopping experience with clients, if it's not a pleasant shopping experience, they may not be back. They may not be back. Um, and then also respect family choices and the different cultural and regional preferences and the format that aligns with today's family lifestyles. Think of how you consume various products. Do you buy always the great biggest container that's the cheapest? Well, I do sometimes, but sometimes I don't. I buy maybe what's convenient or I can easily, you know, uh, uh, take to lunch or to, you know, give, give to my kids that are adults now, but give them to take out the door. So, you know, those are some things to consider. Um, lastly, as, as we're kind of going on this, this whole path, I really want to say I, I really appreciate the work that this group is doing, and I understand there's going to be some visits that are made to state agencies. I believe Michigan was selected as one of the states, and I really embrace that because that is, that is really where the tire meets the road. So thank you very much. Clarifying question, Kathy. Yes, ma'am. As soon as I can uh, even begin to reach the microphone. Well, we'll just have to move it. Um, you made the comment that things um, have to meet today's family lifestyles, and this is something the committee has been talking about already. 
Great. But I would like you to decode what you mean by today's family lifestyle, please. Okay, um, let me give an example, might be, uh, say, of yogurt. It's been, been added to the WIC package, which I think is outstanding. <laughs> yogurt. Okay, uh, for most states that are looking at considering adding that to the WIC package, probably the only way that it's going to get approval through our regional office is the 32-ounce container. Well, think of the different package sizes. It has to add up to that maximum nutritional value. So if you look at the how, I mean, I buy yogurt, okay? And I'll probably tell you more than you want to know, but uh, <laughs> I like the Greek yogurt. And I usually buy what's on sale, but I also look at, you know, what the content is. And between different manufacturers, they're slightly different sizes, correct? You know, so I mean, it's just, you know, those types of things. And I'll be quite honest with you, I have bought the 32 ounce yogurt before because I wanted to experience what the WIC clients did. And I didn't eat that last part of it, and I had to throw it away. So I mean, you know, it's just kind of, you know, that's exactly what I meant. Does that make sense? Okay, other questions? Just over, and oh. sit at the table with your okay. colleagues. Right.